Mahomes' knee injury explained. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel where I talk about broken bones and other stuff. Ah! Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes suffered a patellar dislocation this past Thursday night in an NFL football game versus the Denver Broncos. So apparently Patrick injured himself early in the game and was forced to leave the game in the second quarter as a result of this knee injury. We can see from the video available that Patrick was injured when he was attempting a quarterback sneak play on short yardage. Although we can't see the exact moment when the injury occurred, we can see that after the whistle is blown, he is on the ground with his knee held in a flex position and he is unable to get up or weight bear on that leg. We can also see that while he is being attended by the medical staff, they appear to perform a close reduction of his patella directly on the field. In other words, it looks like his kneecap is out of place and the trainers put it back into place before they get him up to take him off to the sideline. Fortunately, Patrick was able to walk off the field to the sideline under his own power. Initial imaging with x-rays showed that there were no fractures. A report early Friday morning from Ian Rappaport suggested that Patrick was expected to miss approximately three to four weeks, but that there was optimism he should be able to play through the ailment after that. A subsequent MRI later on Friday revealed that they were dealing with the quote unquote best possible scenario and medical specialists were generally optimistic about Patrick's prognosis as a result of the negative results of the MRI. So having heard all of that, I'm sure you have a few questions about this injury, how it's treated, its impact on his performance, and what are the likely outcomes for Patrick in the future? So number one, what is the patella dislocation? The patella, or the kneecap, is normally situated in a groove at the end of your thigh bone, or femur, which is known as the trochlea. I often say to my patients that the shape of the patella is like the keel of a boat, which sits in the similarly shaped trochlea at the end of the femur. Normally, the patella is centered in the trochlea and travels straight up and down as you bend and extend the knee. However, from time to time, as a result of trauma or other problems, the kneecap can become dislodged from the central position in the trochlea. Anytime the patella becomes dislodged from the central position in the trochlea and is no longer running up the middle of this groove, this is what is known as a patellar dislocation. Question number two. What will the MRI show that the X-ray won't? The x-rays are very good at showing us the bony alignment. So they are going to show us fractures or dislocations of the bones. However, one thing that the x-rays cannot see is soft tissue. And in the knee, this includes the cartilage, ligaments, and the menisci between the bones of the knee. While we can get an idea about the gross anatomy, in other words, the big picture of what is going on at the knee, the MRI will provide specific information to us about the soft tissues. More specifically, they'll let us know whether Patrick has suffered an injury to the cartilage, the ligaments, or the menisci. The MRI will also give us information about edema or swelling in the bone and it may also reveal subtle fractures which we did not see on x-ray. Question number three. Is there anything that can predispose somebody to a patellar dislocation? Well, yes, there are several things. Number one, a previous patellar dislocation. Anybody who's had a patellar dislocation in the past is more likely to have one in the future. And if you want to know anything more about the statistics of patellar dislocation and the relative chances of having one after you've had one in the past, check out my friend's video on ortho evidence. I'll leave a link down in the description below. From the information that we have available to us, this appears to be Patrick's first dislocation. So his relative chances of suffering this injury were the same as those of anyone else in the normal population. Another factor that could potentially predispose someone to having a patellar dislocation includes collagen disorders such as Ehlers-Danlos. Ehlers-Danlos is one of a number of collagen disorders which are inherited genetically, which result in 
abnormal collagen in the affected person. What does that mean anyway? Collagen is a substance in the body which is used to make up a number of connective tissues which includes ligaments and tendons. Patients who have abnormal collagen often have ligaments and tendons that are looser than they would normally be. As the kneecap is held in place by the medial patellofemoral ligament, MPFL, Somebody who has a collagen disorder might have an MPFL ligament that is looser than it might otherwise be. This would cause the patella to come out of place more easily than it would in somebody who had normal collagen. A third factor that might predispose someone to patellar dislocation is the overall alignment of their lower extremities. Normally, for most people, they have what we call a neutral alignment. If you draw a line, from the hip joint to the ankle. That line travels through the middle of the knee. That is neutral alignment. If the knee falls inside that line, this is known as valgus alignment. If the knee falls outside of that line, that's known as varus alignment. People who have valgus alignment, knock knee. In other words, the knee is on the inside of that line between the hip and the ankle. These people are predisposed to patellar dislocation, and in particular, lateral dislocation. And this is because the line from the hip to the ankle is known as the mechanical axis. The mechanical axis represents the line through which force is distributed in the lower extremity. The mechanical axis also represents the spot where the kneecap wants to be. When you bend and straighten your knee, the kneecap wants to travel in line with the mechanical axis. People who have valgus alignment have a knee where the kneecap moves separately from the mechanical axis. But when you consider all the forces that act at the knee, the kneecap wants to be in line with the mechanical axis. So for this population of people, the kneecap is always trying to jump out of the groove to dislocate itself. It's important to note that there are varying degrees of valgus alignment. And even for some people who don't look knock knee, if we actually take x-rays of both lower extremities from the pelvis down to the ankle, you might find that people who don't look like they are valgus actually have valgus alignment. And as I've said, are predisposed to patellar dislocation. And the final reason why somebody might be predisposed to patellar dislocation is actually probably one of the most common reasons. And that is as a result of an imbalance between the muscles on the front of the thigh. The quadricep is a group of four muscles, one of which is called the VMO or vastus medialis obliquus on the inside of the knee. And the VMO is what is known as the teardrop of the knee. And the VMO is the primary muscle which helps to keep the kneecap located centrally in the trochlea. If on your knee, the VMO on the inside part of the knee is relatively weak to the three other muscles on the outside part of the knee, then there will always be more of a force on the lateral or outside part of the knee pulling the kneecap out of the trochlear groove to the outside. And this would result in a lateral patellar dislocation. And believe it or not, lots of people do have this problem and this is a very common cause of anterior knee pain or knee pain in the front that patients present to my clinic with. Question number four. What is the best and the worst case scenario and what is his timeline for return? Fortunately, Today, Patrick Mahomes' MRI revealed that he had not suffered any significant soft tissue injuries as a result of this patellar dislocation. This was suggested to be the best case scenario. In other words, he had a patellar dislocation with a probable injury to the MPFL ligament. But this injury to the MPFL was isolated and there were no other soft tissue or bony injuries involved. And this includes no injuries to the meniscus, no injuries to the bones, no occult fractures, and most importantly, no osteochondral defects or cartilage flaps present on the articular surface of either the femur or the tibia. Now, some of you might be asking, what is an osteochondral lesion or cartilage flap and why would he have one? Both the femur and the tibia are covered by a layer of cartilage at the knee joint. 
This cartilage, which is known as hyaline cartilage, is very smooth and allows the bones to move past one another very freely without friction. When you have a patellar dislocation, that cartilage can be sheared off or knocked off the surface of the bone, revealing the rough and rigid bone underneath the surface. When this type of injury occurs, this is what is called an osteochondral lesion or a cartilage flap. And fortunately for Patrick, his MRI showed he didn't have one. If he had had one, whether or not they fixed it would depend on where it was located and what size it was and whether or not it involved only cartilage or both cartilage and bone. Cartilage flaps, which are directly in the weight bearing area or are very large in size, generally speaking more than one centimeter or involve both bone and cartilage typically need to be fixed. And he didn't have any of those. So he doesn't need those to be fixed. So what then is his timeline for return? Fortunately for Patrick, he has only injured one of the structures in his knee, the MPFL ligament. And as a result of this, and since this is a first time dislocation for him, he's probably going to be able to return in approximately four to six weeks time. If we assume that only the MPFL was injured and that Patrick has neutral alignment, then this is an injury that can most likely be treated non-operatively. And after a brief period of rest to allow inflammation to settle, he will be able to begin rehabilitation with physical therapy. And once he has restored his strength, flexibility, mobility, and proprioception, he'll be able to return to play most likely with some kind of patellar protection brace. If he goes on to experience recurrent instability upon his return, then I predict he'll undergo an MPFL reconstruction in the off season and rehabilitate his knee to hopefully return in full form for the next NFL season. And finally, question number five. Will Patrick Mahomes be more prone to this injury in the future and how can he prevent it from happening again? Well, the first part of this question I think I've already answered and the answer is yes, he will be more prone to this injury in the future. For exact percentages on the likelihood of injury in the future, check out Mo Bandari's video on ortho evidence. How can he stop this from happening again? Well, at this time, rehabilitating his knee fully is the best way for Patrick to make sure that this injury does not happen again in the future. Restoring the strength, flexibility, mobility, and proprioception of his knee and lower extremities in general will maximize his chances for success and minimize his chance for injury moving forward. Most specifically, he should be concerned with restoring the balance between the BMO and the muscles on the outside part of the thigh as a way of controlling patellar alignment when active. If you're an athlete and you wanna know more about specific exercises on how to minimize your chances of injury, then check out my exercise library on the Human 2.0 channel. Link will be down below in the description. So today we've been talking about Patrick Mahomes' knee injury, and as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.